three on them, so make sure you watch how they're oriented so when you put this whole thing back together, uh, they go back in the right orientation. Um, these are really weird, big, differently shaped screws, so uh, it's obvious what they belong to. screws look like when they're out. And now these pieces just come off like that. Okay, so that was like that, and this just sort of lifts straight out. We're left with that filthy empty case there. Let's set that down there. And this can go off to the side. <coughs> so now we're left with some guts here. There's also this black other plastic piece on the back here that has all of the uh, protection and stuff for the ports. Um, this should just be able to come off now too. There. Okay, so now we've got this. Now the EM Shield's got some clips. There's one in the front there. And a couple more that hold on these things back here. Um, once you've done this once or twice, these start to bend out a little bit, and I was kind of afraid that they were going to break, so the last time I did it, I just didn't reconnect those clips, and that seemed to be okay. Um, you can see back here. Um, but this one, it's a pretty good idea to keep that connected, so when you take this shield off, lift it up from the back, and slide this out like that. Okay. And now we're left with the uh, board itself. So next, let's disconnect this little piece here. This was the ribbon, remember, that connected the hard drive once when we were up on top. Again, there's this little clip. Just flip that up and that pulls straight out. Remember which way this orients. Uh, the blue faces the back there with the kind of S-curve up at the top. Okay, so now we've got this piece here. Um, and this is where things sort of depart a little bit from uh, the other instructions online because this unit's a little bit different. Um, so what we want to do now is flip this over. And we've got the fan and all of this assembly on the back here. So next step is to take this off. This is the world's largest fan. This is the first time you've done this and it's been uh, used for a while. This will have a lot of gunk in there. It's probably wise to blow that out a little bit, keep things from overheating. Um, since I've done this recently, it's pretty clean. So, you need to disconnect the fan connector here, which is exactly the same as the other ones, just comes straight out like that. And then take these three screws off there. So, let's do that.
Okay, and now this should just come straight up and off. There we go. And again, this can go off to the side. And so now we're left with just the motherboard attached to this assembly. So on some of the other models, there are some more screws that need to come off. Um, this one doesn't have any more, and we can just pull this whole assembly straight up. You can actually already see it started to separate right there from the motherboard. And this piece, the actual board itself, is just going to come right off of all of this. Um, this is where you have to bend these clips out a little bit in the back here, though. You can see it's still holding it on um, in virtue of this. So let's turn this back over carefully again. Here's the board, so we're going to bend this back. This is really getting metal fatigue on it. I'm afraid this won't last much longer. So once that's done now, this whole thing will just separate and lift right off. There are these little pegs here and there. And I guess that's it um, that it sits on. Uh, so you got to make sure it lifts straight up. Um, rather than kind of trying to pry it off to the side. And this can be a little bit tricky um, and a little bit scary. If you need to flip it over and kind of use gravity to your advantage, you can do that. Um, you might need to pull on it a little bit. Don't use too much force. Make sure you've got all the screws out, obviously. You should if you've been following the directions. Um, and then this piece will separate. So again, I need both hands for this, so pause here. Okay, I kind of had to work that a little bit. It took me about a minute to get this to break free. Um, you have to pull on it pretty hard. Um, obviously, you don't want to break it, but these motherboards are actually pretty flexible, so they can get a little bit of bend in them. Um, as you'll see when we take this off, what happens is the uh, uh, glue kind of stuff, the heat conductive material between the processor and the heat sink, um, will kind of bind together and stick this to the actual processor itself. So you need to break that bond, which can take a little bit of muscle. Um, but once you've popped it, now this thing will just pull straight up like that and lift off. So do that. And there it is. talking about that bound over here to the heat sink. So I flipped that over obviously as I was pulling it off there. Um, so now this is the uh, the heat sink stuff itself. You can see the copper pipes that carry the heat off the processors and uh, over to the fan. Um, I've done this a couple of times. I reapplied uh, all of this heat sink compound. Um, you're actually gonna have to do that every time you do this operation. Um, so go to Radio Shack or some kind of computer supply store, I recommend the uh, Arctic Silver 5. Um, it's the same kind of stuff you would get if you were building a PC and wanted to uh, put a heat sink on the CPU. Uh, this just helps uh, conductivity, because um, if it's just metal on metal, it doesn't conduct the heat so well. There are more screws on this thing here. Um, we don't actually need to take this apart for the operation that we're doing here, though, so this we're actually done with this unit. Um, so the next step we're going to do now is take this battery out here. This is the CMOS battery that holds onto the motherboard settings. And then we're going to clean these two off. These are the processors themselves. Uh, I think that's the uh, CPU there, and that's the cell processor. And clean the heat sink contacts out. So the way I recommend that you do this is take a Q-tip, dip it in a little tiny bit of isopropyl rubbing alcohol, and just really gradually get all of this gunk off, really gradually get all of this gunk off here. Um, these you can use quite a bit of uh, muscle on. There's not any electronic components over on this side anymore. Um, so you can kind of scrape and be a little bit cavalier with it. Uh, you got to be really careful here though. You don't want to get any isopropyl on the motherboard itself. Um, so I'm going to stop this video again while I do that. Um, again, make sure you do take this battery out here. Uh, all you need to do is get your fingernail or a, a flathead screwdriver underneath there and just sort of pop it out. Um, pretty easy. So we'll come back once that's all cleaned up. 
So just a quick demo of this process. Just filled this up with uh, this regular 70% isopropyl alcohol. Just going to dip the Q-tip in there and start cleaning this off. Just get it all covered once and it'll start dissolving this gunk. You can see it's starting to pull off already. Um, this is a reasonably time-consuming process. It'll probably take uh, 15 or 20 minutes to do both of these and the processors also. Um, so I'm not going to make you watch me do this. and I'm not going to make myself hold the camera that whole time. Uh, so again, come back when this is done. Alright, so we've got this all cleaned off now. You can see it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, there's some text on each of these little processors. You can kind of see it on this camera. Uh, once you can read that, you've probably got it good enough. Um, it just needs to be good enough that you can, when we reapply the uh, uh, thermal compound, once we're done with all of this, it's um, getting a relatively clean bond so that it's not uh, all gunked up with the older stuff. There's the heat sink. Um, likewise, it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, so now we're ready to actually do the reflow. Um, I've got this monstrous looking heat gun here. Um, hair dryers will not work. Uh, they don't get hot enough. This one has uh, two settings. It's got a high and a low. Um, the low, I believe, is about 500 degrees, and the high is, I think, uh, 750 or 800, which is really hot. Um, so what you're going to want to do is start off by preheating this whole board. Um, and this is really important to do um, before you start really blasting these chips. Um, it's essential that you get the whole board up to a, a reasonably high temperature um, because otherwise, uh, from the uneven heating, you're going to get cracks. Um, and that's really bad on the motherboard. So what I'm going to do is flip this on to low and uh, just kind of show you right here. Just going to start heating it uniformly from reasonably far away. You can see I've got... Okay, so we've got it all cleaned off now. Um, you can see the processors here. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, there's a little bit of text on these processors. You can sort of see it here. Um, once you can read that, um, then that's probably good enough. Uh, it just needs to be clean enough that when we reapply that thermal paste after we've done all of this, um, it gets a nice clean bond. You can see the same thing over here on the, the actual heatsink itself. Um, so now, all of that was preliminary. We're actually ready to do our reflow. Uh, make sure that battery is out and disconnected. That's very important here. Um, so I've got this heat gun here. Uh, it's really horrifying. Um, it's got two settings on it. Uh, hair dryers don't get hot enough, so you need to actually get a, a, an industrial heat gun. These are usually for like uh, stripping paint off houses and stuff like that. Um, the lower setting on this, I think, is 500 degrees, and I think the higher one is like uh, 750 or 800, something like that. That's the level of heat that you need to actually do this. Um, so what we're going to do is first, and this is really important, we're going to preheat the board. Um, so what that means is we're going to heat both sides of this. Uh, uniformly. So I'm going to do low heat all over on this side and then uh, kind of flip it over periodically and heat the other side too um, so that the whole thing rises in temperature at about the same rate. Uh, if we don't do that, if you just blast these things right away, uh, everything around the processors is going to get really hot while the rest of it's really cool and that really high temperature gradient is going to crack the motherboard and that's bad. Um, so we want to make sure the whole thing gets pretty hot before we really start to blast the processors and do the reflow. Um, so I can show you what this looks like uh, doing one side a little bit, um, but I'm going to need both hands to lift that up. Uh, so I'm going to do the preheating first, um, and uh, then I'll come back and show you what it looks like to actually blast the processors themselves once we've got that. Um, I've got this on... You can see uh, just a spare computer case that I have lying around.